this is Procreate for Windows and it's called Leonardo. Now I'm not sponsored or affiliated with this program. This is not a sponsorship. I have been having a blast in Leonardo. Let me tell you why. All right. The very first reason Leonardo has been so great is the infinite canvas. Genius, brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? I love canvas board type thinking because it allows you to mind map and concept really quickly, but having an actual drawing program behind it just makes it feel that much better. They currently do not have custom brushes. So you only get eight basic brushes, but honestly, for what I've been using it for, it's been perfect. And the brushes feel really good. The brush engine feels really, really solid. It is fast. It is buttery smooth. Let me show you how fast this thing is. Right now, you can see my recording software. I'm gonna just click on Leonardo for the first time, okay? It's not open right now. It's open. Look how fast that opened up. Now let's compare that with like Blender. Blender is a very powerful piece of software that opens up quickly. So that's why I'm comparing it to that. But it obviously has completely different functionality. Let's compare it to Krita. Oh, it finally made it. And we're finally drawing. Now let's compare it to Clipsio Paint. Pretty good. Great, new document, great drawing. So, you know, a couple seconds. Now let's compare it to the beast, Photoshop. That's how long this thing takes. New file. Sluggish beast of a program. How about Affinity Photo? I don't do any drawing and painting in this program, but you could, it's comparable to Photoshop. Obviously my program of choice has always been Clipsio Paint. I'm a total shill for it. I would say like 98 to 99% of all my professional work is done in Clipsio Paint. Photoshop is still the industry standard, so you have to use that, but I'm not really here to talk about professional workflow programs. Let's just put those aside for now. What we're here to talk about is just the drawing experience and something that you enjoy just spending time in. I really enjoy drawing inside Clipsio Paint. I really enjoy it. That's why I use it. That's why I've stuck with it for like the past seven or eight years. But Leonardo, man, let me tell you something. Let's do that again. One Mississippi. I, I did, it's faster than a second. It's faster than Windows Explorer for crying out loud. Oh my gosh. So by default, the program opens up to your screen size, it seems like, or it opens up to 4K by default in less than a second. You're working at 4K resolution. Here's the cool part, okay? I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I've been doing. I have transferred all of my Magic Punk work into Leonardo. I've been doing all my concept art, all my concept art for Magic Punk moving forward is gonna be done in Leonardo. And unfortunately, Leonardo does not have a time-lapse feature, so I have to manually record any work that I do, which I have been doing. And that's good for Patreon. Follow my work for behind the scenes on Magic Punk. And also some new ideas. These guys are called the birds. So I'm working on designs for these guys. You've heard of Goat Mommy, but have you heard of Bird Mommy? You can even disable the infinite canvas, but I think that's one of its best features. So I'm gonna keep that on. Another thing is just the UI flourishes. Everything just feels so nice. You have your layers over here. Every palette can be undocked. So for example, color, I can just pull it out and it just works. Another thing I like to do is pull out my line settings. So that way I have access to symmetry rulers really quickly. Another thing to note, and this is really important, Leonardo is raster based. This is not a vector drawing program. This is supposed to be for concept artists and people who just wanna do fun work in here. It has a smooth brush feature. So by default, there is stabilization on the brush, but you can do smooth, which really increases the stability. And then there's like this weird, it's really hard to see. Your lines almost kind of glow a little bit with this red tail. So that just smooths out the brush even more, even though it already feels really good. So our brushes are ink. So we have an ink brush, just a basic round brush with uh, size pressure. It has all the same tools you'd come to expect from a drawing program. So I can select something, press Control T. Instantly I get transform tools like this. We have a basic pencil. Not gonna lie, I don't really like the look of this brush. Marker. Calligraphy, good sketching brush. And again, all these brush options have their own, you know, pressure sensitivity. You can adjust the pressure curves for these things. 
right? You can rotate the canvas holding Alt and Space. It's kind of hard to see, so here, I'll draw a circle, some lines so you can see. And then another thing is there's a rotate tool right here and it drops like this pin here that you can rotate around. Everything is just animated so nicely, like just the way the menus and UI open up, everything is just animated so smoothly. I have brush size tied to my wheel here, but you know, your open bracket, close bracket, open parentheses, close parentheses, classic stuff. There's a smudge tool, basic smudge tool. This is cool. This is their perspective ruler. So now you're just drawing in perspective. Look how nice this looks. Look at this UI. Take notes, Clip Studio. Take note, guys, this is so, this is so cool. And it just works. It just works. Oh my gosh, it's so nice. I don't use perspective a whole lot, but the fact that this is here and it works as well as it does, it just looks really cool. And one thing I really like that it does is the UI tries to do its best to get out of the way of your brush. So you see like right here in the middle, there's like this glowed out effect around the lines, so I can see my brush tip. So that way the lines are not intersecting with my brush. Again, just UI UX stuff that are just like, this guy is clearly an artist who likes to draw because he's thinking of things that in other programs just bother me. There's an isometric view, which is really fun to play with. Right? This sort of unrealistic, unlimited vanishing point, but you can just make boxes. There's rulers, there's ellipses. You can put the ellipses in perspective. Uh, I think if you go here, you can do ellipse in 3D, which allows you to sort of distort things. So this is cool. And ellipse in perspective. So that's fun. Another thing that's really cool is you can, in fact, paint with transparency, similar to Clip Studio Paint. And actually, Photoshop has this feature too. But you hold down control. You just hold down control with your brush. You turns it into an eraser. Hey guys, Purge here. I also want to go over some of the other options that are available within Leonardo that you'd come to expect from a drawing and painting program. For example, they're limited, but here's a list of all the current blend modes available for layers. Everything you would need to make a piece of art or a sketch is available here, including its own built-in dodge and burn layer modes. There's also a grid view. There are rulers that are available and there are various channel layers that you can see. For example, you can see the red, green, and blue here, the alpha and inverted. Here, you can choose how the canvas operates. Here's where you can set your min and max zoom out. So right now my max zoom out is 12.5% of the total canvas. So if I zoom out, here's everything that I can see. But I can adjust this up to 6.25%, zoom out quite a bit. And I can also limit this keep me zoomed in either at 100 or 50%, which is the default. But I found that a little bit frustrating, just wanting to move around. So I bumped that to 12.5 so I can really see everything. Speaking of zooming in and out, if you're zoomed into a piece, here's some studies that I was doing, just studying compositions. You can press X and get a full view of the current artwork. And then you see this little selection box and wherever you click, that's where it zooms in and focuses on next. So that's helpful for moving around picture or a collage of work that you're working on. And real quick, I didn't showcase all the brushes properly, so I wanna go through them. This is ink. This is pencil. This is marker. This is calligraphy. Jagged brush, this has some texture on it. And you can mess with the texture on this here. Not every brush has the same setting. Some, some of these brushes are bespoke. But you can always reset them back to their default under here. Go to parameters and hit, just hit reset brush. So there you go. Here's the default brush for that. The round brush, standard drawing brush, flat brush, really crank this up, has a nice painterly oil filbert look to it. And then airbrush is just a soft brush. It's also worth pointing out that the color wheel can be adjusted to be a square. It can be RGB sliders. It can be HSL. You can even do a history of all the colors that you've sampled and create your own swatches. There's also a variety of adjustment layers. So like you would come to expect in a basic photo editing program, brightness and exposure, hue, saturation, color balance, color rise, 
things that you would need for just drawing and painting exclusively. If we just go down this list of tools that you have available here, you have an eraser, you have a smudge tool, you have the fill bucket, which needs a complete and closed circuit to use. You have the color dropper, which you can just hotkey with alt while using a brush and it picks up things. I like this little preview window, it's very nice. You have your rulers, you have your move tool, magic wand tool, you have your lasso tool, it has polygonal, so you can just click to create points or you can click and drag to get back your regular lasso. Very nice. I have a regular selection box here, ellipse or rectangle. I'm sure if I hold shift, it creates an even one. If I hold shift and alt, it does it from the center. This is working as intended. I love seeing programs that utilize hotkeys from other programs. It's great. It makes transitioning between them very easily. There's a gradient tool, color to transparent. There's an eraser gradient, which is actually kind of cool to think about. So you can just gradate linear and radial. I did this back to color and transparent, very performant. I think the linear one might need a selection. So you need to have a selection for the linear gradient so it's not applying across the entire canvas. So I'll just make a quick selection again, and there you are. There's an export button here and then a rotate button to quickly rotate and then you can snap it and reset it using that. You can even flip the entire thing using F. So control F flips just one layer and F flips the entire thing. Uh, these are, this is, this whole canvas is probably thousands and thousands of pixels and it's happening instantaneously. So again, I just feel like I didn't fully go through all of what this has to offer, but it is actually pretty substantial for the small little program that it is. I'm not convinced Leonardo is a professional workflow program, meaning you're not gonna get all the same things that you can get from it in Photoshop and Clipsio Paint and things that you can bring art from start to finish. But what I love about it is that it's just a joy to draw in and you get to drawing right away. This is Procreate for Windows. The reason that I believe Leonardo to be the best alternative for Procreate on Windows is just how simple the UI is, how quick it gets you directly into painting, how fast and powerful it is. However, it does lack some of those favorite Procreate features, like all of its brushes. Unfortunately, I don't think Leonardo is going to be a mimic realistic painting type program. It is for ideating and sketching quickly. And I love it for that. And that's primarily what I used Procreate for. So if that's a program you're interested in, just having a digital sketchbook, you can trial it for 15 days. And now it is $39 as of August 16th. Post recording jazz out. And I've already given feedback to the dev. One, I would love an Android port. I switched over to my Samsung Galaxy tablet S9 Ultra. Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful to say. And I love it, it's great. My stylus doesn't need to be charged, which is really important for me. Something like this, Leonardo, where I can just pick it up and sketch as I go is ideal. The next thing is that it doesn't have a mesh warp or a liquify tool, which is something I use often in my concepts to just help push shapes, move things into proportion. Custom keyboard shortcuts is the next thing I talked to the dev about. I said, hey man, custom keyboard shortcuts are kind of great. And coming from Clipsio Paint, one of the reasons that I'm sticking with Clipsio Paint, you can check out my video where I talk about my custom keyboard shortcuts, but it has just increased my workflow exponentially. I get compliments and comments all the time on how fast I produce things. And it's honestly that I'm not fighting the UI all the time. I'm just flying through the tools that I need and I'm just producing things. And that's what I wanna be doing. And Leonardo does that like 90% well. It just needs a couple more things. I haven't tried making a full piece of art on this because right now I'm just using it as a digital sketchbook mind map where I can just concept art things really quickly. Like you can see here, this is gonna sound really sad, but what you're looking at is like two years worth of work. Um, and I obviously have not been the only thing I've been working on, but trying to solve what these look like has taken me quite a long time and I'm really close to finishing it. So if you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing with Magic Punk, subscribe to my Patreon. I'll get you all the behind the scenes stuff there and you can keep up to date with all my concept art that I'm doing for that there. And also helps just support the channel. Go support this dev. I think he's making a really great product. I think Leonardo is going to become a handy tool for every artist to have. <sighs> I just want to address what I commonly see on the internet, which is this sentiment for artists that we don't need to pay for our tools. This is simply not true. Every other professional that I know who works in videography, graphic design, cinematography, it doesn't matter. Anything that has to do with anything other than quite literally drawing pictures for a living, people have no problem spending money 
on good hardware and good software. It's great that Krita exists. I'm super happy that Blender exists, but I am totally fine paying for good software that is super functional. Blender is an exception, not the rule. I wish most software was free to the public, available for everyone, just a charity. But the reality is that making good software costs money and it costs people their time and they should be paid for that time. So Leonardo is in beta right now, $35. Once it comes out to 1.0, it's only gonna be $70. If I can get that license across two devices, worth my money. Here and back again. Hope you enjoy Leonardo. Go check out my Patreon, consider supporting the channel, like and subscribe, ding the notification bell. I've never said that, but I'm gonna start saying that now because I've realized that the algorithm is so aggressive that I never see anyone I'm subscribed to on my home feed. With that, use Leonardo and go and make good art.